All right, in this video, I'm going to be covering a spaghetti and egg corn squash cross. So a egg corn squash that got cross pollinated with a spaghetti squash. And these are seeds I saved from last year. So I'm going to cover why did this happen, um, how it happens. And what type of fruit did it produce, which it produced a lot, by the way, like an absolute insane amount. And how to, you know, necessarily not let this happen to you. Okay, so, you, uh, egg corn squash and spaghetti squash are in the same family. They're part of the Pepo family, which is pretty much if all of your summer squash, if not all of them, this includes zucchini, by the way. It also include, includes many different types of pumpkins, but it also includes egg corn squash and spaghetti squash. Uh, for example, a, a butternut squash is not in the Peppa family. That's a ma ma machata, which is one of the most um, disease resistant, and pest resistant varieties of the family. Um, so, like a, a butternut squash probably is not going to pollinate with an egg corn or spaghetti squash at least not freely uh, because they are not part of the same family but egg corn squash and spaghetti squash are part of the same family so the reason i know what these are is one i save these seeds from i save these seeds from a egg corn squash plant that i grew last year that produced egg corn squash also has spaghetti squash plant very close to it if not next to it so I saved the seeds from it, planted it. I knew once this thing started producing fruit, something was a little bit off. They were not shaped like an acorn squash, but had kind of the same green color, except instead of being a solid green, it was more stripe, multi-pattern going on. This is what's left of the plant, which will be coming out today. This is where everything, most of the stuff was harvested, all this dead area. This was all that one plant. It was a very large plant, produced a total of 27 different ones. Um, I have, this is one of the large guys, just to give you a size reputation, like this one is on the larger side, but I mean, there's more than a handful of those. And this is a smaller one. And I took the seeds out so you can see what it looks like the inside. It kind of looks like a spaghetti squash the inside. It's not orange like an egg corn. And when you cook it, it does get stringy. It strings just like a spaghetti squash does. But the flavor is like a spaghetti squash that's been turned down. It's like a mild spaghetti squash. Like I said, the plant produced 27 of them. I got two buckets in the garage full of them. I'm going to wipe them off today, put them in some shelves in the house, and try to give some away. Because I already did cook one. We ate it. I uh, kind of cooked them like an egg corn squash with like butter, maple syrup, real maple syrup, of course, brown sugar, some spices and stuff like cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice. Kind of like you would do like a roasted fall egg corn squash. The flavor was pretty good, but as you went deeper into the squash towards the, the skin layer, it became more, more spaghetti squash-like. So, if you want to prevent this from happening, just don't save your seeds. If you are grow one of a particular family, so if you really love egg corn squash and you're dead set on saving seeds, don't go uh, grow a spaghetti squash next to it. Or if you do grow a spaghetti squash, make sure they are significantly apart from one another to try to prevent that from happening. Now, I have been saving my spaghetti squash seeds for a handful of years, um, and I get some really nice, produces some really nice spaghetti squash, nice deep yellow, uh, very large spaghetti squash. And I have not had an issue yet with one of those becoming cross pollinated, um, but that's also a possibility of the egg corn cross pollinating with the spaghetti. And I don't know what that would produce. You know, if a if a spaghetti produced a cross plant egg corn versus an egg corn cross plant spaghetti. Depending on what plant you're saving the seeds from, is it going to produce the same thing or produce something entirely different? Um, of course, this also, like I said, could cross pollinate with the summer squash, uh, especially the zucchini, which ha which um, can happen because they are part of the same pepos. So they can freely pollinate with one another. Um, 
If you grow hybrid varieties, there's no point of ever saving your seeds because you won't end up with the same plant anyway. And you won't get all those benefits of the hybrid, which is what you paid and chose to begin with. But yeah, this is just a quick video to show you if you save your seeds from plants that can freely cross pollinate with each other, um, at some point there is definitely a potential. You're, if you, you're going to plant seeds and you're going to find out you're not going to get the plant that you thought that you were going to get, but you're not going to know till the next season because cross pollination, when it happens, you do not know the effects until you save the seeds from that thing that's been cross pollinated and plant it and let it grow. It does not happen in the first generation. It happens in, within the seeds themselves. They are what have the code in it to tell the plant to be what it's going to be. That's where the DNA is. Cross pollination does not affect your first year's fruit. You're not going to notice any difference. So, but anyway, till next time, hope you all have a good day.